In the previous lecture we started talking about the anticoagulant drugs. And we said that there are four main sites in the coagulation cascade that drugs can act on, and inhibit or activate, according to its action. Activators of antithrombin 3, vitamin K and agonists, direct thrombin inhibitors and selective factor 10A inhibitors. And we already discussed the activators, of antithrombin 3, the unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, and fondaparinux. So today we'll continue talking about the anticoagulant drugs, and we're gonna talk about the vitamin K and agonist, the very famous drug, warfarin. Let's start by the mechanism of action. Factors 2, 7, 9 and 10, require vitamin K as a cofactor for their synthesis by the liver. Warfarin acts by preventing the reduction of vitamin K, by inhibiting vitamin K epoxide reductase. So it breaks the loop, and prevent the activation of these coagulation factors by carboxylase. It inhibits factor 2, which is prothrombin. So prevents the formation of thrombin. Subsequently prevents the formation of fibrin, so prevents the clot formation. Warfarin is used in the prevention and treatment of deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, thromboembolic disorders and stroke prevention in the setting of atrial fibrillation. Adverse effects of warfarin include bleeding. Minor bleeding may be treated by withdrawal of the drug, or administration of oral vitamin K. But severe bleeding may require higher doses of vitamin K given intravenously. Skin lesions and necrosis are rare complications of warfarin therapy. Cholesterol microembolization. Warfarin is teratogenic and should never be used during pregnancy. Let's finally talk about pharmacokinetics and drug interactions with warfarin. Warfarin is rapidly absorbed after oral administration, 100% bioavailability. The mean half-life of warfarin is approximately 40 hours, but with high individual patient variation. And it has a duration of action from 5 to 7 days. Warfarin readily crosses the placental barrier, and it is not excreted in breast milk. It is highly bound to plasma albumin. So drugs that affect warfarin binding to plasma proteins, can lead to variability in the therapeutic response to warfarin. For example, sulfonamides has a greater affinity for the albumin binding site, so it can displace warfarin, leading to a transient elevated activity of warfarin. Warfarin is metabolized by the enzymes of the liver. Then the inactive metabolites are excreted in urine and feces. Agents that affect the metabolism of warfarin may increase or decrease its therapeutic effects. For example, enzyme inducer drugs, such as phenobarbital, increase the metabolism of warfarin, so decrease warfarin's effect. And enzyme inhibitors drugs, such as erythromycin, decrease the metabolism of warfarin, so increase warfarin's effect. That's all for this video. In the next lecture we'll talk about the direct thrombin inhibitors, and the selective factor 10A inhibitors. So subscribe and wait for the next video.